Hey folks, in this short video, we're gonna look at combinations and permutations. We're gonna see the difference between the two, how to identify if it's a combination or permutation, and then we're gonna see how to do these type of problems on a TI calculator. But first, in this first example, when we're looking at permutations, we need to understand something called the factorial rule of counting, which I covered in my previous video. But to refresh on it, um, competing in a race, there are seven sprinters. How many possible ways could the runners finish the race? The way we would do a problem like this, we find the number of orderings of something. This is a type of permutation. Because if, if we look at first place, there's seven options for who could get first place. There's seven different sprinters that could get it. But once first place is assigned, then there's six options for second place because one person has already been assigned first, right? And then five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. And so we have this product where we're starting with seven but decreasing by one every time. This is called a factorial, and our mathematical symbol for it is the exclamation point. So the ways of ordering seven sprinters is seven factorial, which you get by doing seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. You could do that in a calculator. I'll show you how to do the, the factorial in a calculator here in a little bit, but that means there are 5,040 different ways this race could turn out. But here's where we get into kind of the meat of permutations in the second example. It says competing in a race, there are seven sprinters, but how many outcomes are there for who gets gold, silver, and bronze? I'm gonna talk a little bit how this differs from our previous example, and then we're gonna use this example to derive our rule for permutations. So if you look right here, you might say, okay, well, if I think about that seven factorial, we know that seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. But notice in this one, we really only care about gold, silver, and bronze, agreed? So that means we care about the seven, we care about the six, and we care about the five, but I don't care about all these people. If you're not getting a medal, we don't care about you, right? And so how do I take away all of the different arrangements or orderings that are created by this times four times three times two times one. Now, what you might be saying is you might be saying, okay, well, if I wanna get rid of all these, you could just do seven times six times five, which is true. That's what we're looking for. Seven options for first place, six options for second, and um, five for third. And that, that is that is all how we would calculate it. Seven times six times five will give us our answer. Now, but we're, what we wanna do is we wanna generalize. I wanna see if we can use this idea to come up with a general formula. So if we start with our factorial, and I want to take away times four times three times two times one, you might be thinking, oh, well, all we got to do is we got to subtract four times three times two times one. Because if I subtract out all of these arrangements, that gets rid of them and leaves us with what we want. Well, we can't subtract four times three times two times one because subtraction doesn't undo multiplication. What we actually have to do here is we have to divide. I want to divide by four times three times two times one. And you see that by doing this, it would cancel everything out and just leave you with your seven times six times five. Now, let's think about how we could generalize this idea, okay? So if I come over here, our numerator is seven factorial, and seven is the number of, of sprinters we have. It's the number of items that we're trying to order. Now, in our denominator, we had four factorial. And the question is, how could I generalize? How could I come up with this four factorial from what's given in the problem. Well, what we have in this problem is there's seven sprinters, and then we're taking away the number that we care about. I don't wanna divide out those first three because we care about those first three. I don't, I don't wanna divide out the seven, six, and five. I wanna leave those. So what we do down here is we do seven minus three factorial. The seven comes from the amount of items we have, and the three comes from the amount of items we care about. This is how we would generalize what we did here. Our actual answer in this question would be 210, okay? But let's move on. I want to give you the general formula for a permutation. The, a permutation is the number of ways in which a set or number of things can be ordered or arranged. And here would be our formula. This is the notation for it, okay? But I want us to recognize that N is the number of objects that we're trying to order, and R is the number of those that we care about, right? In that race that we just had, we cared about three. We cared about first place, second place, and third place, gold, silver, and bronze. So on that last example, N would be seven and R would be three. And you, you can see with this notation, it would be seven with a capital P for permutation and then a three. That's a notation to represent these permutations. Now, if we come down here, your school newspaper has an editor-in-chief and an assistant editor-in-chief. The staff of the newspaper has 12 students. And how many ways can students be chosen for, for these two positions? How do we select chief and editor-in-chief for those two positions? Well, what we're gonna have here is we have 12 is our number that we have, 
And then we care about two of those. If I have um, an editor, an assistant editor, that's one permutation, but then I could change the order and that would be another permutation, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to do 12 factorial over 12 minus 2 factorial. And if I actually do the math for that, you can you can um, work it out by doing the repeated multiplication. I'll show you how to do that in the calculator in a little bit. You get there's 132 ways in which to do that. Now, we're going to move on from permutations. We're going to talk about this idea called combination. So as I read this, I want you to think about how is this example different than what we just did? It says there's eight people in a particular position that are applying for management. Your boss will interview three of them. How many ways are there of choosing the three people that are getting interviewed? Now, I want you to think about how this differs from our race example, okay? Here, there's no first, second, and third. I don't care about the ordering of these people. I'm only caring in what way can we group three people? In what ways can we select three people out of our 12? So I want us to think about how we could change our situation. So we still have eight people. So our, our numerator is going to be eight factorial, okay? And then if we divide by... 8 minus 3 factorial, here's what the, the problem with this relationship is and why this relationship doesn't work for this problem. If I, you know, labeled my people A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H for our eight people, right? And I selected three for interviews. Let's say I selected person B, person D, and person E. If I select B, D, and E, According to our formula right here, that would be a different selection than D, B, and E. But in this situation, it doesn't matter the order that I select them. They're, they're all getting three interviews. So I want to get rid of all the repeated arrangements of these of the three that I select. I need to, I need to take away because this is going to give us way too many orderings of our three chosen. I don't want all those different orderings. I hope that makes sense. And so what we would do to get rid of all these extra orderings is if I'm selecting three of them, that means there's an extra three factorial. Anytime I select three, there's three factorial ways of ordering them. So if I divide by three factorial, the number that we're choosing or selecting, that's going to divide out all those extra orderings. And this idea is called, oh, and our answer there, let's see if I actually did that one. Um, this is called a combination. Our notation for it would be a choose three or you might see it shown like this with an 8 and a 3. But in this particular case, if you if you calculate that out, that would be 56 in this case. Now, let's generalize. Here's your formula for it. A combination is a mathematical technique that determines the number of possible arrangements in a collection of items where the order does not matter. So combinations, order doesn't matter. And so here's our notation for it. If we have n and we're choosing r things, we're going to do n factorial over n minus r factorial. Just This part's just like permutations but then you divide by R factorial to take out those repeated orderings of the things that you're choosing, okay? Here's our example that we'll do. You're in charge of quality control for a manufacturing company. Out of 30 items that come off the assembly line, you choose four for testing. How many different ways are there of choosing the four items? This is a combination because the order that I choose those items doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I pick this item first and this item second. The, the grabbing of the four items is all that we care about. So if I look at this, we have 30 items, and we're going to choose four of them. Okay, if I wanted to show it with that other notation, it'd be 30 choose 4, could be shown like that. But what we're going to do here is we're going to do 30 factorial over 30 minus 4 factorial with a 4 factorial right there. Now, this is actually going to be a really big number. Um, you could do all the repeated uh, button pushes on your calculator. But if you were to do that, you'd get 27,405. Now, the hardest part about these type of problems is if I give you a situation, how do you know if it's a permutation or a combination? That's what we're going to look at on the next slide, and then I'm going to show you how to do both of these on the calculator. So here we go. First, you have eight Pokemon in your Pokedex, but you have to choose five of them to battle with. And how many ways can you choose your, your, your Pokemon that you're going to go to battle with? Now, if we look here, I don't know enough about Pokemon. I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting this as the order does not matter. Okay, I'm just selecting my five Pokemon. So this would be eight, choose five, or you could do, use this notation, eight, choose five, but that's going to be eight factorial over eight minus five factorial with a five factorial right there. Now, let's talk about how to do this in our calculator. If you're with eight, and then I'm going to push math, and I'm going to go over to 
PRB for probability. And then do you see the NCR? So I've got the eight, the eight is my N, and we're choosing R of them. Um, in this particular case, we're choosing five of them. And then this is gonna tell us it's got the 56 total options. So we don't have to um, necessarily use that whole formula every time. So the answer to that first one's 56. Now let's look at that second example. In our second example, there are 10 students who all think they're my favorite student. And how many ways could I select my favorite and second favorite student? Because the order matters, we're going to do a permutation. That's going to be 10 students, but we're only concerned with two of them. Okay. If we were to do this, this would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 factorial. The order matters because there's a difference between favorite and second favorite. The order matters. Now, lastly, let's look at how to do this in the calculator, and then we'll be done. I'm going to start with a 10 because there's 10 items that we're concerned with. And I'm going to go to math and I go over to PRB for probability. And I'm going to choose the permutations option. And then we are concerned with two of them. So our R is two. So if I push that, there are 90 different permutations in this situation. So by using the permutations function in the calculator, you can kind of omit using that whole formula. The last thing I'll show you real quick is how to do a factorial in the calculator. If you were concerned with that within that same Actually, if I, if I want to do like 10 factorial, for example, if I start in that same menu and I go over a probability and I hit that fourth option, there's your factorial option. And that's how you could do that. So the main thing whenever you're doing permutations or combinations is you got to worry about if the order matters or if the order doesn't matter. If the order matters, it's a permutation. If the order does not matter, it's a combination.